Number 10, Operation London Bridge. The plan following Queen Elizabeth's passing is codenamed London Bridge, even though details of the plan were leaked to the press. Behind the scenes, events will unfold like clockwork precision as it's crucial to the operation that the chain of communication is followed exactly as planned in order to control the spread of the news correctly, as the information must be brought to the British government first before the world finds out. In fact, a similar plan was followed when Prince Philip, the Queen's husband, died in April last year. When the Queen passes, a number of strict measures will immediately come into play. First, the Queen's private secretary directly informs the Prime Minister and the Privy Council Office, which works with both the monarchy and the government. The Queen's private secretary is supposed to use the code words, London Bridge is down. Then the Prime Minister will host urgent calls with the Cabinet Secretary and the Senior Cabinet. From there, the Foreign Office will inform the 15 governments and the 39 nations in the rest of the Commonwealth to let them know the news. So it's really crucial to the monarchy that the information is very and well number nine, and Kate before and it becomes public you. knowledge. It's long been reported that Meghan and Kate do not get along, but it was never confirmed by either of the women until Meghan did her explosive Oprah interview. In November of 2018, a report from The Sun claimed that Meghan Markle made Kate Middleton cry during a bridesmaid dress fitting. But Markle claimed in the Oprah interview that it was the other way around, and Kate actually made Meghan cry. Markle continued, quote, and I don't say that to be disparaging to anyone because it was really hard week for the wedding and she was really upset about something. Markle even said that Kate later apologized for this outburst. Markle called the way the incident was handled a turning point in her relationship with Harry's family. Sources from Kate's camp also said that after the interview, she was frustrated that Meghan brought it up because she was hoping it was done with. Number eight, Prince Charles will be king. Although there will be rituals and ceremonies, the prince does not actually need any of that to become king. It happens immediately. Despite the fact that some British citizens don't want Prince Charles to be king, the moment that the Queen passes, he officially becomes the sovereign and will go through a kind of transformation that is carried out ceremonially and legally the very next day. And yes, there is also a codename for Charles's ascension to the throne. It's called Operation Springtide. The very first visitor to the new king has to be the Prime Minister. And in order to ensure a smooth transition to the new official head of state, all members of parliament will gather to swear allegiance to Charles. These steps were also carried out just hours after Queen Elizabeth Elizabeth's father, King George VI, died way back in 1952. On the evening of Elizabeth's passing, Charles will address the nation and give a televised speech at 6 p.m., which the whole world will likely be watching. The next day, senior government figures will proclaim Charles's ascension to the throne at St. James Palace at 11 a.m., and he will be proclaimed king. Trumpets will sound, the flag will be raised up, and cannons will go off in a royal salute. In at number seven, fame changed her. After news broke that Meghan was marrying Harry, and would become a princess, many sources came out saying that fame had changed her and she's all about climbing the social ladder. In December of 2017, news broke that Samantha Markle, who is Meghan's estranged half-sister, was planning a tell-all book about Meghan. In an interview with The Sun, Samantha said, quote, Hollywood has changed her. I think her ambition is to become a princess. Samantha also complained that Meghan forgot about her after gaining high society status. A source close to the family told E! News that Samantha cannot be trusted. However, Samantha is not the only person who says this about Meghan. Meghan's former best friend, Nikandi Pretty, told the Daily Mail in December 2017, quote, There's Meghan before fame and Meghan after fame. Number six, mega crowds. There will be a massive outpouring of grief as soon as the public finds out, which might be similar to the wave of emotion felt after Princess Diana's death in 1997. This is because most people never knew a time when Queen Elizabeth wasn't queen, and so they won't even be able to imagine the moment when the queen passes. For the British people, it will be a moment of tremendous grief and will likely be very overwhelming. According to documents obtained by Politico, there is concern that the number of people who will come to London to mourn Queen Elizabeth could number into the hundreds of thousands, which could really present a logistical nightmare for the city. It's more than possible that the sheer amount of people will overwhelm the transportation systems, the hospitality industry, basic services, and even policing and crowd control. Like after Prince Philip's death last year, when Buckingham Palace requested that the public not gather outside the royal residences to leave tributes because of the pandemic, and a whole bunch of people did anyway. Not only that, but it's hard to imagine people not gathering after the Queen's death, if only to leave notes, mementos, and bouquets of flowers. In at number five, William's affair. Like I said before, Will has been rumored to have cheated many times over the years, but there was never more proof than in 2020 when the tabloids claimed that Will cheated on Kate while she was pregnant with her third child. The rumor started when the 
The Sun published an article claiming that Kate was feuding with fellow royal and friend Rose Hanbury. Nobody was sure why this feud started, although it was rumored that Will was having an affair with Rose. Then In Touch decided to take the cat out of the bag and confirm these cheating rumors in an article. Then in another Daily Beast article, the affair was said to be confirmed in a tweet by a royal reporter who quickly took it back and deleted this tweet after backlash. The palace even took legal action against these reports and denied any rumors. Number four, the Queen's funeral. As the protocol goes, Queen Elizabeth II will be moved from Buckingham Palace to the Palace of Westminster for the public viewing of her casket at Westminster Hall, where she will lie in state. Where the military procession from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Hall will be lined with crowds, wishing her a final farewell. The Queen will have a state funeral and on the 10th Tenth day after her passing, the Queen's body will be moved into Westminster Abbey for an elaborate state funeral where several world leaders will be in attendance. Although the UK currently has no legal limit on how many people can attend funerals, there may still be limits on who will be there. The day of the funeral is to be an official day of mourning in Britain, and the nation will quite literally come to a halt that day, as crowds are expected to be gathered on the street as well. After the funeral at Westminster Abbey, the Queen's body will be brought home to Windsor Castle outside of London, where many members of the royal family over the centuries have been buried at St George's Chapel, as her final resting place will be beside Prince Philip, where some other monarchs and royal family members are also buried. Number 3. Charles's Coronation The ceremony won't happen for several months to allow time for a mourning period and preparation, but once the Queen has been laid to rest, the palace will get to work and organise a coronation for the new King of England. For instance, Queen Elizabeth ascended the throne after her father died in 1952, but her official coronation was only held a year and a half later to allow an appropriate length of time between a monarch's passing and holding a celebration to crown the heir. Charles will then pick his name as British monarchs are allowed to pick their own ruling name when they take the throne. Like Queen Elizabeth's father, King George VI, who was known as Bertie, but he chose to be King George after his father, King George V. Elizabeth on the other hand had a far easier choice since her birth name is the same name as another one of England's great queens, Elizabeth I. So there's been a ton of speculation that Charles would choose a different name when he is crowned, like George after his grandfather or Philip after his father. But chances are he'll end up keeping his name and just become King Charles III. Number 2. Camilla will be Queen Although it didn't always seem likely, it's become quite apparent that Camilla will be named Queen Consort, because according to experts, the longer that she's actually married to Prince Charles before he ascends the throne, and the bigger her public profile becomes, the more likely it is that she'll be formally styled as Queen when Charles becomes King. So why was it thought that she'd never officially be queen even though she's married to Charles? Well, it has a lot to do with her choice of current title. Technically, as the wife of the Prince of Wales, Camilla is entitled to be called the Princess of Wales, but because that was Princess Diana's title, she instead chose to use the Duchess of Cornwall, out of an apparent respect for her memory. So based on the fact that she chose to keep her lesser title, there was speculation at the time of her marriage to Charles that she might be called Princess Consort instead of Queen when Charles becomes King. But as her popularity has steadily increased over the years, this seems less less likely now. Although to anyone who is unaware of the history between Charles, Camilla and Princess Diana, I couldn't recommend enough that you look into it and find out why Camilla was so unpopular in the first place. And coming in at number 1, uncertainty. Although there is much debate about what happens when the Queen passes in terms of the continuation of the monarchy, chances are that everything will stay the same. Despite the rumours, Prince William will never be king before Prince Charles. But the thing is that Charles is still likely to have a very short reign due to his age, unlike his mother who unexpectedly unexpectedly became queen at just 25 years old, 73 year old Prince Charles has spent his entire life in preparation to wear the crown. As of now, he is the longest waiting heir apparent, and he will be the oldest British monarch ever to take the throne. And there is still a lot of uncertainty as to when that will happen. But after his own passing, the monarchy will continue to streamline and modernise as the younger generation takes the reins. But it's slightly less clear what will happen to the Commonwealth, which is the association of independent former colonies that accounts for almost a third of the world's population. In 2018, the Queen insisted that it was her sincerest wish that Charles carry on as head of the Commonwealth, to which all the government leaders agreed, and officially announced to the press that he would take her place when she passes. And at number 10, Harry and Meghan are related. This should be taken with a slight grain of salt, because at some point if we go back far enough, we're pretty much all related. So as we know, Meghan was born American, and of course Harry is British, but they still share some DNA. The Daily Mail did a genealogical investigation, 
Union, where it was revealed that Harry and Meghan are cousins dating back to the 15th century. The connection is on Markle's father's side. But of course, it's 15 generations back, so there are no real connections still intact, and there's zero chance anyone will be related at family gatherings. In at number 9, Always Wanted to Be Famous An old friend of Meghan's came forward after the engagement claiming that Meghan always wanted to be famous, even since childhood. She not only loved being the center of attention from a young age, she was very calculated in who she spent her time with. Nanaki Pretty told the Daily Mail, quote, All I can say now is I think that Meghan was calculated, very calculated in the way she handled people and relationships. She is very strategic in the way she cultivates circles of friends. Pretty also claimed that Meghan always wanted to be famous. Royal scholars have pointed out that this trait is a positive for Meghan and Harry's relationship. Apparently, most of Harry's other relationships didn't work out because the women he was with did not like all the attention. But clearly, this is not an issue for Meghan. Penny Jenner, author of Prince Harry, Brother Soldier's Son, told The Express, quote, One of the advantages of Meghan is because she's in the public eye, she likes that. The real problem with Harry's girlfriends in the past is that they absolutely hated the media attention that scared them off. In at number 8, Meghan cheated with Harry. After Meghan was confirmed to be dating Prince Harry, it came out that there might have been some overlap between her relationship with Harry and with her ex who was Canadian chef Corey Vitellio. Before she started dating Harry, Meghan was seen out with the chef on multiple occasions. Nobody thought anything about her past relationship until a fan noticed that Vanity Fair changed the date when Harry and Meghan started dating from May to July of 2016, because apparently she was still with the chef in May. Harry and Meghan first met at the Invictus Games in Toronto, and when Harry asked for her number, the Telegraph reported that she was still with her ex. The Daily Mail actually asked the chef about his split with Meghan, and he claimed that he and Meghan had, quote, parted permanently when Harry came on scene. However, he did somewhat hint that the pair might have been together in some capacity while she still was with Harry. Number 7. Succession Will Change After Charles becomes king, Prince William, one of Queen Elizabeth's grandchildren, will move up and take the position called heir apparent. And after his father's coronation, Prince William will assume the title of Prince of Wales in a separate ceremony. Charles is currently called the Prince of Wales as that title is traditionally given to the next in line to the throne. This would make Kate Middleton the Princess of Wales. But because this was Diana's title, she might choose a different one, just out of respect for her late mother-in-law. Which is kind of like how Charles's current wife, Camilla, uses her own title, the Duchess of Cornwall. So the Queen's passing would totally change the line of succession, and put William and Kate's children a lot closer to the throne. So George would become second in line, Charlotte would be third, and little Louis would be fourth in line. And Prince Harry will still technically remain below them in fifth place to the throne. Interestingly enough, the original law stated that younger male heirs would be considered for the throne before their older female siblings. However, in 2013, this all changed, and now any older female sibling born after the 28th of October, 2011, can be considered first for the throne. So because Princess Charlotte was born in 2015, she gets to keep her place in line. And at number 6, chose career over marriage. Before Meghan was known for her role on Suits, she was actually married to a producer named Trevor Engelson for two years, before they eventually split. The split was apparently caused because of Meghan's work, and a former friend said that Meghan clearly chose her career and work over her husband. The former friend, who served as a maid of honor at Marco's wedding to Enkelson, told the Daily Mail, quote, It was such a shock when she told me they were getting divorced. Apparently, the stress of the long distance relationship is what caused the main issue. Meghan was living in Canada at the time, filming the show Suits while her husband was in LA. Apparently, Enkelson was heartbroken over the split and did not see it coming. Halfway at number five, does not treat animals well. Meghan Markle likes to be known for her humanitarian and social efforts. One thing that Meghan is very proud of is that she adopted two dogs from a rescue shelter. But it seems that it was not happily ever after for the two puppies. After Meghan became a princess and was set to move to Kensington Palace in 2017, a spokesperson confirmed that Markle's retriever, Bogart, would not join her overseas. Apparently, Meghan felt that it was inhumane for the dog to take the long trip, along with the difficult approval process for dogs coming into the country. And Meghan left the dog with one of her friends in LA. Then later in December, Daily Mail reported that her other dog, Guy, broke both of his legs. We're not sure what the circumstances were, but apparently Meghan was quote, distraught over the accident. In at number 4, Meghan cut off her friends. After Meghan split from her ex-husband, it was said that she spent a lot of time in London. While there, she apparently formed a friendship with local TV personality Lizzie Cundy after attending an event together. Lizzie disclosed that Meghan wanted her to help finding a new man. Apparently, Meghan wanted him to be British and famous. In a 2019 tell-all, Cundy wrote about Meghan, quote, we were having a girly chat and then she said, Do you know any famous guys? I'm single and I really love English men. 
So I said, we'll go out and find you someone. Apparently Megan was interested in soccer player Ashley Cole, but it didn't go anywhere. Then Megan apparently slid into the DMs of X Factor winner Matt Cardle in 2015, but shortly after that, Cardle just stopped replying. But apparently after Harry showed some interest in Megan, Megan felt she had no need to stay in touch with Lizzie Cundy anymore and basically ghosted her. Apparently Cundy asked Megan about Harry, then they chatted for a bit, but never saw each other again. Cundy added, quote, I was literally ghosted by her. In an Number three, the staff hate her. It was reported that while Meghan and Harry were living in the royal palace with the other family members, the staff hated Meghan so much that they started to quit. In October of 2018, a palace aide and assistant named Melissa quit because of quote, Hurricane Meghan. Apparently Melissa was a longtime aide of the families and a trusted assistant, but that all changed when Meghan came into the picture and annoyed the staff with her requests. Apparently Meghan adopted a lot of West Coast habits like waking up at 5 a.m. and quote, bombarding aides with texts. One source told The Mirror, quote, Megan put a lot of demands on her and it ended up with her in tears. Melissa is a total professional and fantastic at her job, but things came to a head and it was easier for them to both go their separate ways. Apparently, Megan's tension with her staff also caused a rift between Megan and Kate. Kate apparently called out Megan for her strict and disrespectful behavior towards the staff. And at number two, Kate and Megan never friends. It was reported that as of March of 2021, Kate and Megan had not spoken to each other in over a year, only meeting for functions where both women were attending. And now that the bombshell news that Kate made Megan cry has been exposed, we're sure they will not be friendly anytime soon. The reason the feud started was because of tension between their husbands, Harry and William. A royal source said, quote, there's real animosity that the brothers have towards one another, and that has spilled over to Megan and Kate's relationship, making it very hard for them to be friends or even friendly. The two women are also reportedly very different and really don't have a lot in common. Even though during the Oprah interview, Megan claimed that she'd forgiven Kate, this reportedly made tensions even worse between William and Harry. A source said, quote, William is very protective of Kate and can get very angry. For Megan to name Kate in a negative light is worse than being attacked himself. And finally at number one, Megan knew she wouldn't stay royal. The exit of Harry and Megan from the royal family was devastating news to many. But after further investigation, it seems that Megan might have known she was not going to be a royal for long. And she might have even concocted this scheme to get the most amount of press possible, then to leave the royal family and go back to Hollywood, where she's always wanted to be. When it was announced that the royals would be leaving, everyone blamed the decision on Meghan, as she was the only change in the family before Harry's formal exit. British columnists said that they think Meghan did not know the difference between being a celebrity and being a royal. Canadian millionaire Kevin O'Leary even slammed Meghan, saying she was the reason that nobody cares about the couple anymore. Quote, I think Megan got him into a bad place, and maybe she should do a little soul searching. She knew what she was getting into when she married him. Page Six also reported that Megan put some clothes in a storage location in Canada before she got married. She then decided to keep them in Canada, and they were sent to the couple's new Vancouver home after the Megxit announcement. Maybe Megan left them there because she knew she would be coming back. A new tell all book has just been released that gives readers an in depth, behind the scenes look at the royal family. With a central focus around Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, authors Omi Mead Scobie and Carolyn Durant unpack the secrets hidden in the royal couple's relationship. The book is called Finding Freedom, Harry and Meghan and the Making of a Modern Royal Family if you want to check it out. The origin of this book has become a bit of a hot topic of debate as well. You see, the authors claim that they obtained all of their information by conducting over 100 interviews with those who know Harry and Meghan best and even some Buckingham Palace aides. That being said, palace insiders believe that the book was sanctioned by Harry and Meghan which is being billed as the truth behind their departure from the royal family. Setting aside as to whether or not that they had any say in the book, it certainly brought a lot of things to light about their life as members of the royal family. And at number 10, brief separation. Kate and William first met in university while studying at St. Andrews. Will was first interested in Kate after he saw her walking the runway in a fashion event. But during their university days, the pair went through a separation that was almost the end of their relationship. Things started going south the summer of 2004, a year before graduation. The separation was documented in the book, William and Harry Behind the Palace Walls. At this time, William told his friends he felt, quote, claustrophobic being with Kate. That summer, the pair decided to try separating to see if that would bring them closer. William went to Greece for a boys trip while Kate spent time with her family. Insiders said that during the summer, quote, she was debating whether or not she should text or call him. She said how sad she was and how much she was missing William, but she never mentioned it after that. Kate was heartbroken when it was rumored that William started seeing other people during this break. But in the end, they ended up back together. Number nine, the bells will toll. Once all the really important people know, everyone else across the United Kingdom and the world will find 
find out. You'll probably remember for the rest of your life where you were when you heard the news. In London, the ceremonial traditions of the British monarchy will begin. National flags will be immediately flown at half mast on all government and civic buildings, like churches and the royal palaces across the UK. This should happen within 10 minutes of the news being broadcast to the world. Then official gun salutes will be arranged in London at all saluting garrison stations. In the immediate hours after the Queen's passing is announced, the bells will toll in churches all around London. Not only that, but the famous tenor bell at Westminster Abbey will be heard, which is only ever rung in the event of a royal death. St Paul's Great Tom will also toll. Britain will enter a period of mourning before the funeral, and multiple businesses will close for around 10 days. Things like theatres, clubs and sporting events. Only at this time will full details of the royal funeral be issued, along with details of a national minute silence. In at number 8, Will dumped Kate on a phone call. The pair went through a brief split once again in 2007, and to make the breakup even worse, Will dumped her over the phone. The cherry on top is that it all went down while she was at work, so she had to try and keep it together the rest of the day. According to the book William and Kate, A Royal Love Story, she was working as an accessories buyer at Jigsaw, a luxury retailer, when she all of a sudden got a call from Will saying he wanted to end things. An insider claimed, quote, she excused herself, went to a back conference room out of earshot of the other buyers, shut the door, and for the next hour heard Will sputter the reasons that he was breaking up with her. Even though that kind of behavior would usually prevent a woman from ever speaking to him again, they eventually got back together and Kate forgave him. In a joint TV interview announcing their engagement, she said about their split quote, it actually made me a stronger person. You find out things about yourself that maybe you hadn't realized. In a number seven, underpay staff. Working for the Royals seems like a dream until you realize that the pay is probably lower than you would think considering the family is uber rich. Staff at the Kensington Palace even threatened to strike in 2016 when a pay cut of about $5,000 a year was threatened. This came after a $3 million renovation to the palace so clearly the royals had the money to pay people adequately. Even though it's been reported that many of the royal staff do not do their job for money, rather they take pride in working so closely with the royals. The insider also wanted to make it clear that the staffers who worked most closely with William and Kate were not considering the strike, but her staff had shaded her in the past. One of Kate's staff said about her, quote, Kate is a lovely, lovely girl. She totally adores her husband and they're devoted to each other. But that extra something, which you would call the X factor, the magic quality, charisma, it's not there. Ouch. In at number six, shady ski trip. It seems that Will and the boys' trips are a very bad mix because he's had quite a few shady moments while out with the boys. Once was back in 2017 when he decided to take a skiing trip with some friends that got him in a lot of trouble. Insiders claim that Middleton was very angry when she saw tabloid photos showing Will dancing in a club and in one picture dancing with a blonde woman putting his hands on her waist. All this was happening while Kate was at home with the kids. Even worse, this trip caused William to miss a Commonwealth Day service at Westminster Abbey, which is a huge event for for the royals. Reports surface that the queen was not pleased and had a stern talking to with him when he got back. Number five, royal tour. When his position is solidified and Prince Charles becomes king, it will be time to get to work, even before his mother's funeral. After a short period of grieving and official condolences for the family, the new king will embark on a tour of the UK prior to the funeral, visiting Scotland, Northern Ireland, and Wales. He will meet leaders and attend services, as well as go out and meet the people. Although it seems like a very difficult task to anyone, especially because he would still be grieving, Charles has been training for this moment his entire life, so he's going to be well prepared. Not only that, but going to meet his subjects will be very good for his image, as he will really need to do the work to encourage positive feelings among the public about his new position. Because the truth is that many Brits think that Prince Charles wouldn't be a good king. One of the main arguments is that he just simply doesn't possess the charm and warmth that Princess Diana had. He comes across as aloof, and the New Yorker once described him as a snob. In general, he just never really tried to relate to ordinary people, while Prince William, on the other hand, has reached out to people just as much as his mother did, and is thought of as a much more compassionate person. In at number four, broke restrictions. Because of the virus we're all fighting, many governments implemented a restrictions on travel and leaving the home unless necessary. In December of 2020, the UK had some of the strictest measures, though many thought it was strange when Will and Kate still decided to travel. It was reported that the royals took a quote, private royal train to Scotland, stopping in the country's capital of Edinburgh, which was under tier 3 restrictions. This meant no leaving your home unless it was essential. The royals were in the area to praise healthcare workers, which is very nice of them, but not essential. In the couple's defense, the Scottish government admitted that they did know about the visit in advance and took precautions. But there was a lot of talk that a Zoom meeting would have sufficed. And a number 3, unnecessary trip. Of course, the royals deserve a vacation every once in a while, but since taxpayers essentially fund these trips, 
they get a lot of scrutiny from the press. The royals were criticized after they decided to take a trip when Prince George was only seven months old and did not take him along. The couple decided to travel to the Maldives in 2013, calling the trip a second honeymoon. The Daily Mail noted that the couple was accompanied by several taxpayer fun in Scotland Yard detectives, clearly a sore spot for the public. This trip also happened less than a month after William went on another short hunting vacation with his brother Harry. Kate had also gone on a vacation with her family shortly before. In a separate article, the Daily Mail reported a supposed, quote, storm of protest by taxpayers who criticized the excessive trips. And at number two, inappropriate requests. On the day of Harry and Meghan's wedding, Meghan wanted everything to be exactly the way she liked it, which is usually what happens for normal weddings. But royal weddings are much different, and most of what happens is passed down for generations and become very strong traditions for the royals. Meghan tried to change a lot of things around for her wedding, which people did not like. One of the most offensive requests was when Meghan asked for air fresheners to be deployed in the chapel where she was to get married. Apparently, the smell in inside St. George's Chapel was not good enough for her. British insiders stated it does have somewhat of a musty smell, but it is not unpleasant, and it's expected for a building that's been around since 1475. A source said that Meghan wanted the staff to go around with spray guns to make it smell better, but the request was denied. The source said, quote, Royal household staff stepped in and told her office politely but firmly that this was the Queen's Chapel and it simply wasn't appropriate. I don't believe a request of that nature has ever been made before. And finally, at number one, secret names. Since this pair is so famous, they have decided to use secret names for each other during trips so they don't give away too many details to the public. Reportedly, the Duchess of Cambridge is known as Daphne Clark when she goes away, and the Duke goes by the alias of Danny Collins, according to The Express. Both of the initials of the fake names are DC, a nod to their true titles as Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. Apparently, Kate has more than one codename that she will use, but this one has been confirmed since she let it slip during a shopping trip in Wales in 2010, according to The Mirror. Harry and Meghan actually met on a blind date that took place at Soho House's Dean Street townhouse in London. A source in the palace told the authors that they chatted over drinks for nearly three hours before going their separate ways. Almost immediately though, they were obsessed with one another and Harry apparently appeared to be in a trance of some sort after his date. Meghan had checked off every box for Harry and he knew that they would be together even after that one date. Due to how high profile Prince Harry's life is though, he and Meg had to do a lot of very, very secretive dates to avoid any negative publicity. Like I read that they got walked in through a back door into a restaurant and they had to shut the whole place down. C craziness. Once they became a public couple though, it would become expressly clear as to why they hid the relationship for so long. You see, in the early days of their romance, Prince Harry had gifted Meghan with a 14 karat gold chain bearing the initials of H and M. Apparently this necklace alone sparked a huge controversy behind the castle walls. Like Game of Thrones behind the castle walls. The authors in the book detailed what happened and said she was advised that wearing such a necklace only only served to encourage the photographers to keep pursuing such images and new headlines. When Meghan finally met Harry's brother William, she was worried that he would grill her, but instead William reportedly said that he was looking forward to meeting the woman who had put that silly grin on his brother's face. Which is kind of cute. Sadly, Meghan experienced a lot of hatred for the color of her skin to the point where Harry had to issue a statement that was released by his communications secretary. In part of the statement, they said, Prince Harry is worried about Miss Markle's safety and is deeply disappointed that he has not been able to protect her. It is not right that a few months into a relationship with him that Miss Markle should be subjected to such a storm. He knows commentators will say that this is the price that she has to pay and that this is all part of the game. He strongly disagrees. This is not a game. It is her life and his. Harry went on to condemn the racist and sexist abuse that his girlfriend was going through the moment that the relationship went public. His relationship with his brother is a bit tumultuous as well though. According to the book sources, William had told Harry to not feel like he needed to rush this relationship. And apparently that really angered Harry, which some palace insiders believe was an overreaction and basically Maybe, but who knows, we weren't there. However, it still sums up them as people with William being the calm and rational one and Harry being the one who can't help but take things far too personally. Perhaps the most frustrating truth about this couple is the amount of criticism and flack that they get on a daily basis from not just the royal family, but even the staff who work there. For example, the Queen's longtime dresser, Angela Kelly, was constantly at odds with Harry leading up to the wedding. He was trying to obtain access to Meghan's chosen tiara for a hair trial in advance for the big day, but Angela was constantly dragging her feet. She kept telling him that the Queen was rejected rejecting her choice of tiara, but in reality, there was never a disagreement between Meghan and the Queen. Rather, the conflict was just between Harry and Angela. More concerns about the stability of the royal family started to bubble up simply by trying to organize a family photo. The book alleges that Prince William and Prince Harry were not excited to get together for this photo either. A source close to the family said the boys can be hot and cold with their father, calling the planning for the photo an absolute nightmare, adding that neither William nor Harry made much of an effort to make themselves available. Now, if you've been following this couple, then you'll know that 
both of them have chosen to step away from their royal duties. Again, according to the book, Buckingham Palace had little warning when it came to the details of them announcing that they were stepping down from their royal duties in January. What absolutely flustered the Buckingham Palace aides was that a website had laid out the intricacies of their departure. However, despite having people conspire against them and trying to ruin their relationship from the get-go, the couple are doing just fine now. They've been living in a secluded compound in Los Angeles with their one-year-old son, Archie, while still doing volunteer work in the area delivering meals with Project Angel Food. 